are now doing problem seven of the physics bootcamp addendum. Uh, this one says part A, one mole of uranium-238 undergoes alpha decay. Write down the equation of the decay and how much energy is released. And then part B, one mole of thorium-231 undergoes beta decay. Do the same. So uh, when I was going through the questions portion of the addendum, we talked about beta decay, we talked about alpha decay. So this problem is uh, built on that basically we, uh, we have to be able to write down the equation of the decay but we have to go one step further we have to find out how much energy is released using einstein's equation e equals mc squared right so uranium 238 uh so basically we write down the uranium atomic number is uh, 92 it has 92 protons 238 and it is uh, undergoing alpha decay. So alpha decay, remember, uh, alpha decay means it's the nucleus of the helium atom. It has two protons and it has two neutrons. Therefore, its uh, total atomic mass is four. Okay, what should we write here? Well, whatever is there has to have atomic number 90 and then atomic mass has to be 234. Well, what is that element? That element turns out to be thorium, thorium 9234. Uh, uh, uranium 238, by the way, is the, by far the most abundant isotope of uranium. About 99% of uranium comes in that form. And it has a, it decays via uh, alpha decay and it has a half-life of, um, very, very long half-life. Half-life of, um, 4.468 billion years. Let us now calculate how much heat is released here. So we can call that Q. So how much heat is released in this decay? Well, what you have to do is you have to go uh, to some source, you know, a periodic table, you could go online. Uh, there's also um, an application called Wolfram app and um, you can use that application to find the actual mass of these elements. So U238 has a mass of 238.05078. So one mole of it will have 238.05078 uh, grams, right? So this is in units of grams. Helium 24 has a mass of 4.0026 grams. And thorium-234 happens to have a mass of 234.0436 grams, okay? So then what you do is you add these two to see what the total mass of the right side is. You get 238.00 becomes 0, 0, 4 becomes 4, and then 2 and 3 become 5, 6, 6, 12, and then they make that a 6, okay? So 238.0462 grams. Notice that that is a little bit less mass than this, right? So that means there's a little bit of mass lost due to this reaction, and that mass lost uh, shows up as heat, okay? So what we have to do now is we have to subtract this so we can find out how much, is, uh, how much mass is lost. Two thirty-eight point oh five oh seven eight minus two thirty-eight point oh four six two, and it's going to be very small. So the ch the loss in mass delta m is four point five eight times ten to the minus three grams, right? <clears throat> so since that's grams, we got to convert that to kilogram. So how many kilograms is that going to be? 10 to the minus six, right? Because a thousand grams is one kilogram. So how, that's how much mass is lost. How do we find out what is that equivalent to in terms of energy? Well, we have energy equals mc squared. This is the most famous equation in all of physics, E equals mc squared. Mass and energy are equivalent. So the mass that is lost appears as energy, okay? In the form of heat, right? So we have to use the delta M here, multiply it by the speed of light squared, okay? So what is that equal to?
e is equal to 4.58 times 10 to the minus 6. The speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8. Square that. Now when you square that, what do you get? You get 9 times 10 to the 16th, right? 3 squared is 9, 10 to the 8 squared is 10 to the 16th. Well, now all we have to do is 9 times 4.58, okay? So 4.58 times 9. So that gives you uh, 41.22 times 10 to the 16 and 10 to the minus 6 is what? 10 to the 10th. This is joules. Okay? And <clears throat> if you want to, we, I guess we could express this as uh, 412.2 and then this is a uh, gigajoules. Right? 10 to the uh, if we move the decimal over, uh, this will become 10 to the 9th, and we can say 412.2 gigajoules. One mole of uranium were to undergo this decay, it would release 412.2 gigajoules of energy, okay? We could also ask the question this way. We would say, how about if one atom of uranium undergoes this decay, how much energy is released? Often in tables, when you look up online, you will see instead of one mole, you will see it expressed as atom. So in order to do that, we can say, this is the energy released per mole, okay? And then we say one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23. So uh, this would be atoms. And then this would be the energy released per atom of um, uh, uranium be 6.8449 times 10 to the minus 13 joules per each uh, atom of uranium, that's how much um, energy would be released. And then we can express this in electron volts, and that's the way that you will usually see it in tables. So we can say 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joule is one electron volt. So we divide this number by 1.6, divide it by 10 to the power negative 19, okay? And you will get what? 4.278 times 10 to the sixth electron volts, which you will see in the data tables as mega. So this will come out to be uh, mega electron volts. So one Atom of uranium will give off 4.278 mega electron volts of energy, and then one uh, mole of uranium will give you 412 gigajoules of energy, okay? Well, now let's go to part B. Let's see an example of a beta decay. Uh, one mole of thorium-231. Let's look at that one. So you look at the periodic table again, and you look to see... Uh, what is the atomic number of thorium, and that is 90. So the thorium-231 uh, <coughs> is an isotope of thorium, and it has a half-life of 25.5 hours. And its common form uh, mode of decay is via beta decay. So how do we write beta decay? Well, remember, beta decay is the emission of an electron, so E minus 1, 0. So whatever goes here must be 91, 231. What is that element? So again, you look up the periodic table. It is protactinium. Protactinium Pa. Okay? The protactinium 231 also happens to be a common isotope um, of protactinium. Okay? And it has atomic mass of what? 231.035. Eight eight three nine nine grams. Okay, so again, you look up the atomic mass of thorium, thorium two thirty one, and that one is going to be two thirty one point zero three six three zero four three four three. Okay, so this one is slightly heavier, three six versus this is three five. Again, you're going to lose mass. So again, we're going to go through the same procedure, right? So delta M, you're going to subtract these, 
10 is 4.764443 times 10 to the minus 4 grams. So change it again to kilogram, and that's going to be 10 to the minus 7, right? And then multiply it by the speed of light squared. So the energy released is equal to delta mc squared. So 4.764443 times 10 to the minus 7. And then remember the speed of light squared is 9 times 10 to the 16th. So, you, so it comes out to be 4.28, I'm going to round it here, 288 times 10 to the 10th joules, okay? So if we wanted to do in terms of gigajoules, it's a little less energy. So this would be 0.4288 gigajoules, okay? Since the two masses were more similar, the loss of mass was less and the release of energy was less, okay? So again, if we convert that to uh, per atom, what we're going to do, we're going to divide it by uh, Avogadro's number. The energy released would be 4.45 times 10 to the fifth electron volts. So either we could do this in terms of kilo electron volts or mega electron volts. We could say 0.445 mega electron volt or we could say 445 kilo electron volts, okay? So I didn't write all of the steps down, but the steps are very similar. You subtract the masses, multiply by the speed of light squared, divide it by a thousand. Then if you want to convert to per atom, you divide by the Avogadro's number, and then you also divide by the um, uh, <clears throat> conversion between a joule and an electron volt. So at the end, you get 445 kilo electron volts. So now you can see how to do these kind of uh, decay calculations, whether it be beta decay, alpha decay, or any other kind of decay. We could also do similar calculations to hydrogen fusion, fusion of elements together to form heavier elements. Those also release uh, energy. These, the ones that uh, we're doing here are called fission. It's the breaking of heavier elements into lighter elements and losing mass and creating energy. And then there's fusion, which is the building up of atoms to create heavier atoms. And then that happens in uh, the sun, such as in the proton-proton chain, okay? So thank you very much. Now you know how to do calculations like this. Thanks.